And Beckham saw Sullivan off his line. Oh! This is a private member's bar. That is absolutely phenomenal. Exclusively for the supporters of the greatest football team in the world. Cleared. Geeks with a shot. Jerry Manchester United. Beckham. Into Sheringham. And so Sheringham. And welcome back to another episode of the Biggie and Smalls podcast. After a brief hiatus, man, we got a lot about a lot to talk about tonight. United beating shitty in the FA Cup. Interesting developments in the policies from uh, Ineos on the transfer policies. And Ten Hag still hasn't been sacked. I hear he's on vacation. I don't know. I wonder where the hell he is and what he's got on his mind. Uh, also, go give us a follow on Instagram at Biggie and Smalls. We want to hear from you. What's your thoughts on United's performance in the FA Cup? Should Ten Hag be sacked? How do you feel about the new Ineos transfer policies? And also the future of Bruno and Sancho. Predictions, anyone? Shoot us a message. D, how are you, man? What's going on? Oh, not too bad, Scooter. How's the things with you? No complaints. Yeah, it's been, uh, I guess, uh, almost two weeks since our last episode or whatever. Just holiday weekend over here, Memorial Day weekend, and different things going on. So, yeah, we got a lot to uh, lot to catch up on. Obviously, uh, big win. Uh, I think I think everyone, I, I know at least I was surprised we won, but I was... I was very, uh, very stunned by that FA Cup uh, win over there, and I'm not complaining by it at all. And made it even better. It was all the all the young kids who uh, led the way for us. What was your thoughts on that, man? Jeez. Yeah, well, I think that was the reason why we're uh, we had a little hiatus. I think we're all hungover from celebrating. But, um, <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was before the the podcast before the match. We both talked to our predictions. I had United winning three two. Um, I just had a sneaky suspicion that this the, the Ten Hag getting Varane back, getting Martinez back, especially Varane's last match for the club. Um, mm-hmm. That was that's huge for him, especially getting Martinez back. Um, Absolutely. And obviously, Bambit, and Bambit had like literally set up the team the way he wanted it. Probably the first time he's had um, everybody in the, the back line, at least, apart from Yeah, Luke, Luke yeah, Shaw. yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, that's, but, yeah, at least from that standpoint, I mean, that was... That was big, absolutely. I mean, and um, I, I, it was, yeah, I was just stunned by it. But yeah, it was incredible. No, it was a great performance. And I, I, I watched the interview with Varane after the match, and he talked about uh, the way they had it set up, the way Ten Hag pretty much explained the way City were going to attack them, and they tried to nullify that, which they did. Oh they, yeah, they didn't. They, they, the outside of Walker's shots from outside the box, mm-hmm. uh, I don't really remember. Uh, well, now I don't have to make any saves, and he should have saved, you know, the goal he let him, but uh, yeah, you know, get the result, and it was something to, a good way to end the season on a high, especially considering how uh, how dismal the season's been. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, I mean, that was, you know, even and for the fans too, you know, most importantly, I mean, it's just been abysmal uh, all season long. So, so to uh, you know, win a silverware and do it against uh, your city rival, uh, it was. It was unbelievable, and again, I'm super encouraged by seeing, you know, goals by, uh, you know, uh, by the young bucks or whatever. So yeah, I'm, you know, there's really not much bad that I can say about that. I mean, Ten Hag, the tactics he played it right. I mean, and yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't, can't really be that upset about anything about that. I mean, um, sh- you know, shifting into um, uh, Ten Hag's future. Um, you know, we're going on almost, what, 10 days since the FA Cup final, and we still haven't had a decision of that. Obviously, we all saw and read the reports going into the FA Cup. I know we were all pretty kind of a little disappointed that that was leaked to the press, especially, you know, what was it, 48, 48 hours, give or take, before the, you know, the game. Um... Are how are you feeling about uh, there being no decision? Because I I have my thoughts on it. I honestly I I feel like this is maybe the maybe the one knock that we could give on Ineos. Like like what 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 do you need? Why has there been ten days? Like I, I almost feel like it's. Uh, I know you want to do your due diligence and get it all right, but 
this decision should have been made like it, whatever analysis you're doing you it's not like we had a ton of uh european games or different games that were going on a lot of this stuff could have been done during the season and you know could have been more of a formality like i i don't understand and i feel like it's hampering us too because you know now we can't we're kind of in a limbo mode on far as far as uh who we want to bring in as transfer players do certain players want to come back because they don't know a status of who the manager is? I don't know. I feel like this is the one thing I'm a little fuss, frustrated with Enios. Well, well, we can just watch and hide the whole takeover happened. Uh, not the takeover, but the 25% minority stake they took in the club. That, that seemed to drag, drag out for months. So yeah, I don't see, no, I do think they have the right intentions in mind. But uh, when it comes to Ten Hag, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to really understand what's going on because we see reports every day that they're still interviewing uh candidates uh with McKenna now you not know obviously stay out which I'm glad I think it would be too too early for him I think it would have been a Frank Lampard Chelsea my uh, situation there if they brought in McKenna mm-hmm. uh, United I think it's just a job that's just too big for him at the moment I want to see what he does with Ipswich if he does a phenomenal job with Ipswich gives him no no keeps him up gets him in the top say top 12 it might be it might be able to sit there and he you know he plays for attractive football and he might be a, a name you earmark. He knows the club, he's been with the club before, uh, under the under the coaching staff of Solskjaer. But I don't know. Ineo seems to be dragging their feet. You no, know, do I believe a lot of the you know, a lot of the reports that are floating around saying, Oh, they're still interviewing, they're they're dra- no, they're still trying to get someone in there, they're still reaching out to certain agents. That could be just the media just loving the fact that United are still uh, a hot topic point during the even when the season's over. United you know, hated ignore hated adored and never ignored mindset that that's the way yeah. it happened. So I think that's uh, the media is also just stirring up the pot as well. Um maybe Ineos have turned around and I'm I'm reading reports where they say they they're siding with Ten Hag considering the the multiple things he had to deal with and the you know the vast injuries he had. Um he also had to deal with the Ronaldo interview. He dealt with that. He had to yeah, deal with then the Gre- the Greenwood situation. He dealt with that. He had to deal with the Anthony situation. He dealt with that. Then he had to deal with the Sancho situation. There's so yeah. many different things that he's had to deal with throughout the course of one season. That, yeah. And he, and at the end of the day, did they not? No, they didn't perform on the league, you know, fin- finishing eighth. But he still brought them European football, and he still won a major trophy. So, considering everything put into the pot of, is he good enough manager for United? Is he not? I think the players sort of proved that. No, they can and they will play under his his guidance, as we've seen against City. But no, is it a is it a really stamp of approval for Mineos, the fact that they haven't come out? The one thing that really haven't come out that really bothers me, they haven't come out and exactly uh, showed any kind of support to Ten Hag, saying, "Listen, uh, everything you're reading is not true. We support our manager. Ten Hag's going to be the manager next season." Like they haven't come out and said that. If they just no, come and say absolutely. That, it puts, it puts everything to bed. No, there's no more. There's no more articles coming out that they're going to talk to Pochettino. They're going to talk to Tuchel's agent. There's none of that going on. So yeah, exactly. Um, that's the one concerning thing for me. It's not the fact that Ineos are no. It's just that they're, they're talking about. Them. It's just the fact that they haven't come out to show support. Whereas you see other other teams have come out and got their managers and supported their managers and so forth, whereas uh, United are still, like you rightly said, we're in limbo as fans. We don't know if Ten Hag's going to be there or not. The one big thing, and we talked about it weeks ago, months ago, when we talked with Sam uh, Luckhurst on here, where he said, and we've said it too, that Ten Hag is the one manager that, despite the performances, despite the results not going his way, United fans don't seem to, haven't turned on him. They don't, you don't ever see the Ten Hag out banners or the planes going over, over the top of Old Trafford. Uh, you know, if anything, and I watched the, a lot of the post-match uh, analysis of the FA Cup, and you could just see the fans where they uh, really took the Ten Hag, especially delivering another trophy, like you rightly said. Beating a, beating a rival is one thing, but to to do it, in the, 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 that second goal was brilliant, and the, to do it the way he did. Absolutely. And, and, uh, uh, no, and you hear rumors now, you just, I don't know if you've seen Amrabat's brother came out and give a, uh, a new interview saying that Casemiro was actually fit. He was actually healthy, but because he was dropped, Ten Hag told him earlier in the week that you're not going to play, you're not going to start. And Casemiro supposedly well, said, "Well, we'll take me out of the team. Then I don't want to play at all." Well, that's yeah. another. No, again, yeah, yeah, it's another leak, and we keep talking about these stupid leaks a year from the mm-hmm. club. Like, if Amrabat's going to tell his brother that, then he should have told him. Listen, I'm telling you this in confidence. Don't repeat it to anybody. He actually went out and 
did a, a live interview like on camera yeah it yeah like, yeah it wasn't like someone a media from the, a person from the sun saying oh my source was Amber Brassport. no he legitimately sat down no, and said on, yeah. said on camera that Casimir was, was no was uh was healthy he was fit he just he was dropped and he wasn't happy and he felt that uh he just didn't feel like being part of the team which if that's the case I'll take this 85 million point bid supposedly Saudi Arabia is putting in for it yeah uh, I, I I mean honestly it seemed like he you know especially you know if you know if that's the case and that's a true accurate story or whatever then yeah, I mean he basically has had and already had one foot out the door and if you're fit and you don't want to play in the FA Cup final and help your team try and win a piece of silverware then I you know bon voyage my friend <laughs> yes no exactly and I feel like the players that played on the pitch are the players that actually I think genuinely wanted to play for Ten Hag like I think Rashford you know, he didn't do much going forward that ball that he played at uh, uh, Garnacho yeah, for the second goal was that unreal. was yeah which is like so frustrating because it's like Jekyll and Hyde was like that was that whole build up that whole sequence was just incredible exactly and I just know from you know he worked his socks off um, and obviously he's seen his reaction at the end of the match where he was he, he seemed to be uh Emotionally, it was it seemed to be a little tears. I don't know if it was just relief that he brought that no, the United got successful. It's his it's his boyhood club, or is yeah, it, yeah, or, could or be a lot it, of things, you know. It was if you you look at it two different ways. Was he happy? It was a tears of happiness that United. No, he's had a turbulent season. He's not played well. He's been under scrutiny, rightfully so, based on some of the performances. Or was it? You no know, tears of sadness and meaning that is this is this possibly his last match because as we all know now Mbappe's gone to Real Madrid. Yeah, PSG supposedly has earmarked Rashford to be his natural successor in that left wing role. So is it was that his last match playing for for United? I, mean, I don't I don't know. There's just, you never like know. You said, we're in such a, we're in, as United fans like we, United joked in uh, well, text message earlier like we're sort of we're, we're almost so you know, relieving ourselves to just being used to disappointment just based over the last few years. <laughs> yeah. But well, it's happens. like you you think like you know back to Rashford, it's, it's you know or to the broader transfer, transfer policy, policy is is like, I mean, I what was it maybe two seasons ago? Um, I uh, like I mean we're probably gonna see uh, not probably I say we will see double di digit like people leaving the club like it, it's I I don't it's probably gonna be, look like a totally different. Uh, different team next year which i'm not complaining about i mean i um um and you know back back to ten hag or whatever it's like you know i've personally i've gone back and forth on my emotions and or my feelings on him and you know when you ch take a a broader take a step back in a broader point of view the man did deal with a lot and was there was a lot of energy a lot of the injuries and in, with the season uh, and he ended up he ended up delivering against you know one of our biggest uh rivals so you know i i'm kind of leaving leaning towards the camp of i want him back and um i'd like to see what he could do and i was listening to um a podcast earlier about it cuz he has one year left on his deal, I believe, yeah, I believe it's one deal left. Mm, if he yeah. does come back, you almost, you'd have to, I feel like you'd have to offer him an extension on the contract because if you just bring him back for this one year, you're basically saying, all right, it's another prove it or lose it deal, basically, you know? No, exactly. Like, it, it's, it, you rightly say, he's got one year left in his contract. He signed his three year contract when he started as United manager. So, no, do you need to go ahead and um, no? The Ineos group seem to be very financial and business savvy. Are they going to go ahead and say, "Listen, let's see what we let's see what he does under this new structure that we're putting in place"? And if he don't, if he's not successful, then we don't have to at least pay him severance. We don't have to pay the remainder of, yeah. of his contract. So they they can they could do that and not pay out any money. Um, I so we'll see. I don't. It's really hard to say exactly what's happening. It's really annoying being in limbo. But I'm the same as you. Um. I do want him to stay just to see how he does under this new structure. It was probably one of the most unprecedented seasons in terms of injuries and so forth and all the different kind of off-field issues he had to deal with. Uh, and he dealt with them well. I, I personally think I, he dealt with them the way I would like you would expect a manager uh, of Man United to, to deal with it. He, he's trying his best to keep the the player power down 
no, uh, I, I, you and I just talked about it the other day. We watched the '99 um, documentary oh, yeah. on Amazon, and there's a there's a um, there's a really evident quote by Roy Keane uh, after he got you no know, suspended after he, he got booked against uh, Juventus when he did the ch- bad tackle on Danny the Dan from a mm-hmm. bad bad pass from Jesper Blomqvist. But yeah, the, uh, after the match, he said, "Listen, he goes, oh, I'm upset. Yes, I'm naturally going to be upset, but he goes, no, th- there's no player bigger than the club." The, the boy, I'll be there to support the boys. I'll be there, but no, yeah, yeah, no, and to cheer them on and get the victory. That's that. That was the mindset in 1999. No, fast forward 25 years now, and that should be the same mindset. But and I think Ten Hag's trying to get that back in. He's trying to get that mindset of that. You no, know, Man United's always going to be the top. That's as simple as that. Nobody else. Yeah, There's I... no player is going to be bigger, bigger than him. And he's gotten rid of Ronaldo. He sent you no. Know, I was Greenwood with this situation. Mm-hmm. Him. He sent Sancho. Out. Yeah. Um. The central thing just annoys me, just like in yeah. general. I honestly, like, I, I, <laughs> like, he, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen his comments, like, one of his conditions if he comes back is Ten yeah. Hag has to be set. Like, who the fuck are you to make that demand? You fucking, you, it's not like you were, like, any good at Dortmund. Like, goodbye. Uh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you play well and the semi, one leg is semi final against PSG. But that, with, with say, speaking of that, like, Ten Hag, I felt that well because, what it really annoys me, and it's the it's you no know, the media seems to like you had I, I seen uh, the media loves to like to stir it up again, but I seen Klopp supposedly he didn't name anybody by name, did they, but, it, but it seemed like a dig at Ten Hag when he says buying a player for eighty million and then send them out in loan because you don't know mm. how to get the best of them, and then Mourinho said the same thing, but I'm like wait a minute, yeah yeah. Ten, Ten Hag did everything in his power to get to have Sancho play better. He, he sent him at the beginning. He was missing for the first few few like the first month or two of the season because he sent him away to do private training to, to yeah. see a sports psychologist to do. He did everything for him. He catered to the needs of the player. Yeah, yeah. And he came back, and uh, I don't know if you've seen Benny McCarthy's. Uh, He's he's actually not going to be part of the coaching staff anymore. It's one of the contracts that Ineos is uh, not renewing. His contract was up. Yeah. So Benny McCarthy was like the team coach, uh, striker coach. If you yeah, will. yeah. Um, he came out and he did an interview saying the reason why Sancho is never going to apologize is because he tried to, Benny McCarthy tried to talk him with him and said I tried to mentor him. And he said the main reason why he won't um, apologize to Ten Hag is because what Ten Hag said to him was that no, you can say I, I don't perform well or whatever, but you can't call me lazy, and I'm not going to have someone come out and call me lazy. But I'm like, okay, well, instead of you know, throwing your toys out of the pram and throwing a, a little temper tantrum, why don't you go ahead and prove the manager wrong? Why don't you go ahead and yeah, exactly. and run like, the don't most be... distance yeah, exactly. out of every player on the pitch? If, like, if you're going to... Fu- if you if someone's going to tell me lazy, I like if you want to do- prove them wrong or do something about it, go out and do something about it. Like, have a just an incredible performance put in a shift on the field or whatever i I don't know that kind of says a lot about his like mentality and his like mental strength to to me at least exactly well just to refer back to the 99 documentary nikki bot uh talked about the time whenever uh the, the 97 98 season when he, he mm-hmm. just didn't play well and he gave away the ball and Dortmund scored and Ferguson ripped into him and just told just blamed him he's like you're the reason I'm out of Europe yep and, he, like, and Nicky Butt was young then but you didn't oh, see yeah. Nicky Butt turn around you didn't see Nicky Butt turn around so oh, I'm just gonna know you just I'm gonna self-loathe I'm gonna throw temper tantrums I'm like no nah. he turned around he was like no, I need to pull my socks up no there's a man yeah game. exactly I need, I need to play and, like a man yeah and he, he started and played in the Champions League final the next season against Bayern Munich. So yeah, it just, the, the mentality monsters of what you, you know, like the likes of Real Madrid, for example, that no, don't ever want to you know, concede that they're going to be beaten. I, I, that's I think that's what Ten Hag's trying to put on the, on the team. Um, and that's why another reason why I would love for him to stay on for just one more year. I would like to, I, the one thing I do want to see from Ten Hag, if he does stay, is I do want to see him make better tactical in match tactical decisions, there's too, too many times he made decisions this season. Uh, that just, uh just head absolutely, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It's um, he's he's too stubborn sometimes to you know, you know, I guess changes changes tactics or whatever. So yeah, that definitely is kind of frustrating. But man, honestly, is like especially you know after we've gone, you know, we've watched the 99. <laughs> it's not like uh I mean especially the Champions League final against Munich. I mean, it's not Fergie was dead set on that 4-4-2 four, 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 formation. I ended oh, yeah. up working out for him though. <laughs> oh, exactly. And and no he, and even he, switching up uh 
uh, what was it, uh, Giggs on the uh, right and Beckham on and uh, <laughs> whatever. But I mean, hey, man, it ended up working out though. But I mean, uh, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens with it. That's but again, back to Ten Hag. That's kind of like we both feel that way. That's both a big knock on him, at least for me. Yeah, no, no, definitely, and that's this one thing. Obviously, he's still in terms of management he's still a young manager he's not exactly you know he's not he's not been around for 20 plus years like look at jose Mourinho. jose Mourinho came in at, with porto in 2004 jose Mourinho yeah. started his career in management as bobby robson's translator at barcelona so yeah no i mean he came he's in, still he came he's like in the you know to use a baseball he, he's in like the probably the third inning of his career basically or you know exactly. for, like he's in the very very beginning stages of it you know yeah and that, and that was one of the things i like what he said uh and he's literally he's got the he's got some of the media on strings here um ten hag does is uh they asked him like well what happens if the kid i thought it was really disrespectful just the way they treated him after i watched a lot of the post match like you know the bbc uh mm -hmm. jerry lineker uh, yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of like, congr like, congratulations, saying, Do you want, like, I know you've had a rough season, but you got your boys to play well. No, well done. Congratulations. Instead, they were like, Why, Where was this all season? And the first thing I tell you, he goes, Because I had players that I didn't have majority of the season available. I had Martinez available. I had Varane available. Yeah. You no, know, I, I had, I was able to select my midfield that I want the midfield I wanted to select. Yeah. And, that, but instead, they just kept, and then they asked some questions like, "Well, what do you what do you think about your future here? You know, do you think you'll be here next season?" And his exact words was like, "Well, if they don't want me here, I'll 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 leave and I'll go win trophies yeah, elsewhere." Yeah, yeah. Which honestly, I I love that answer because if they don't want him here, yeah, he probably will end up somewhere and win a tro win trophies somewhere. You know, exactly. Put it this way, the the, the fact that. Vincent Company won five matches with Burnley this year, and he's now the Bayern Munich manager. That just shows you that like the 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 whole structure of different managers and all is just so upside down, in my opinion. Yeah, like United, yeah. United should consider themselves lucky. Like Bayern Munich now have a manager that won five matches, and that's it <laughs> for Burnley. Like I get yeah. it. They now have a manager that won five matches in the Premier League, and they've now just hired him because no one else wanted the job. United now shouldn't be should, they shouldn't put themselves in the position that Bayern Munich put themselves in by getting rid of Tuchel, because now they had to go ahead and pretty much. Well, they had. I, to, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't like Company because he played for City, so they're scraping the bottom of the barrel going after Company when they have they had Tuchel there. Tuchel was a Champions League winner. Yeah, yeah. Hag. So is United going to go ahead and go down the same road of letting go of a manager that could potentially you no. Know, Get, bring them back to you know, being successful and all of a sudden then have to start looking for a manager that might not be a good fit for your club like it seems the company might be just a uh a st i wouldn't be surprised if company's only there because Bayern Munich have your mark your Klopp as being the next manager of Bayern Munich yeah i mean that him, they, that, they would, that wouldn't be year. surprised yeah but, you know maybe uh a after a season or two or whatever and he ends up that wouldn't surprise me at all yeah so i don't want united to go down that road united need to get away from this fire manager and be a I, like, look yeah at Chelsea, i agree for well and you know and even and back to fergie i mean you know there was several times where he was almost out the door so um i do i do wish more teams i know you know you need results or you need a, but i do wish that teams would not be so quick to fire a manager um, when stuff immediately. I mean, now if it's a complete dumpster fight, but I, I think we could all recognize the signs or whatever. And this, what happened this year was uh, like unprecedented just between all the off the field stuff, the injuries and everything. So, and, and then to go and cap off your season with a FA Cup win. And and end up in you know European football, you know I say kudos to the man. I mean he dealt with a lot this year. Oh, definitely. Like we just mentioned earlier, he had the you know, the Ronaldo situation, the Sancho situation, the Greenwood situation, the Anthony situation, uh, and then also a lot of people don't talk about it. He was also in the middle of uh, managing a club that was supposed to be getting taken over by multiple different parties well yeah and in multiple different parties and there was no uh there was zero transfers in the you know in the january or whatever so 
you know, if had that not happened, I'm sh- pretty sure that there would have been players to come come in to compensate for basically having, you know, zero <laughs> zero backs or you know, no defenders or whatever. So yeah, I mean, it, you know, he did he d- dealt dealt with a lot, but again, I think we both agree that the one knock on him was just his stubbornness to unchange his tactics. Yeah, well, he's Dutch, so that's 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 yeah. honestly what happens. But yeah, yeah, we'll see. But like you mentioned about Fergie, Fergie was almost almost out the door, and the one thing that saved his uh, save his job and career at United was winning the FA Cup. So maybe hopefully, yeah. maybe hey, ten, maybe, maybe history maybe ten yeah. in the same way. Yeah, history tends to repeat itself. Uh, like could go either way. The the last yeah. Dutchman who won an FA Cup for us got sacked, but it, maybe we'll, maybe we'll maybe they'll uh, do the opposite this time. Um, yeah. All right, shifting gears, uh, Ineos, they, um, I know this has been out for several days now. Uh, so they have a new transfer policy. Uh, it's basically um, age limit of 25 for new signings, no Galacticos. Uh, style of play has to be set by technical director Jason Wilcox. Manager is going to be asked what position he wants to sign, not what player. And Ineos will then send their signings, uh, a list of three, per, pis- per per position to the manager to choose from. Um, what do you think of these uh, of these guidelines, D? Well, I do, I do like the the, the policy of like no Galacticos and player at players over twenty five. Um, I think the mindset there is they don't want to they don't want to have an average an over. Uh, an ever change in team, right? If you, yeah. if you go in like, like they tried that with Mourinho, did that like we had Ibrahim in yeah, his yeah. 30s, uh, and no, and there was times where like it was just right now, then United were stuck with okay, what happens now? Like, whenever, whenever Moyes took over, United had a lot of players near the end of their careers, the, the Ferdinands, yeah, the yeah. Villages, the, the Van Persies, the Carricks, yeah, uh, yeah, so no, and you had that Patrice Evers, we had a lot of players that were near in the end of their career, and I think now, I think Ineos is trying to get through a uh, try to get you know, into a position of instead of having it being a revolving door of players coming in the club, I think they want to try to get a good structure, which is what no, yeah, I know they, or like a core, a, a solid core. Well, I know we keep referring to the no, like look at the class of ninety two is a perfect example. Yeah, the class of ninety two came in the United team in the no ninety three, ninety four, ninety five seasons, and they were literally the core, like you rightly said, the core of the team for almost a decade. So, or no, yeah. some of them left earlier than than others, but they were there for a, a if not the oh, most substantial portion of it. yeah, the most the most successful period of in United's history. If you think back on how many league titles, the Champions League, the treble, the FA Cups, the League Cups and stuff like that. So yep. I think that's their mindset on that. The one thing I don't understand is the the premise of Jason Wilcox will need to, will dictate how the tech, how the, how the team will. Yeah. Play. I'm not understanding I, I'm, that. I, yeah. I'm glad you, cause honestly, out of all the, I don't really have an issue with any of these except for number three, like, I feel like, don't, I, I, don't you, because you played, uh, uh, you know, collegiate. Like, I feel like the style of play should be set by the manager, right? Yeah, and yeah, I think it should. And I, th- I think it's something that the... If, if and first of all, if, if that style of play isn't already established, like, throughout the, you know, whether it's through the youth system all the way up to the senior level, then then we're just doing the whole damn thing wrong to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, well, just look at the game model. We talked about this a few podcasts ago with the game model uh, during the Gary Neville uh, Tag Hag interview. The game model is there because look, look at the success the youth teams had, and you no, know, the under 18s have been phenomenal. The under 21s have also like they've got a lot of you've had some of those players get promoted into the first team. The two the two players that actually scored the goals in the FA Cup final this past that no, a few yeah, years all ago, young youngster, a, a, youngster. A, a, yeah. A, Academy graduates, so like they came through the academy. Like Garnacho and Manu won the youth FA Cup with United two seasons ago, and then Garnacho got promoted to the team before Manu. But then there was a good part I noticed that the Chuji Ten Hag at at the League Cup final last year, where Ten Hag had his arm around Manu and was like almost like telling him like, "Listen, you're on course to be part of this. You're going to be on course yeah, to be part yeah. of this team. This this is going to be you next year." You just keep doing what you're doing, keep working on your game, and you'll be on. The, and they, look what happened. He ended up scoring. He scored technically the winner of the, of the match. But, yeah. Uh, I did. I never understood that because I would understand if Wilcox came in as a manager or someone who's really established. Like he came in from Southampton, and no, uh, I'm glad Southampton bit Leeds. That was great to watch. But um, 
there. But he, I don't know how much influence Wilcox had on Southampton's you know, set, the style of play. I do yeah. think that they need. I do think as a technical director, I think what needs to be rewarded there is that the technical director will be responsible to ensure that the the style of play is set by the manager and the senior team yeah. needs to re, needs to be literally play, passed yeah. on through the different layers. Yeah, of the that academy. I so I what, agree with that. You know, basically the style of play that whether it's Ten Hag or whoever our manager is. That's what we are doing through the entire system. That I, exactly. that I agree with, which I believe should, maybe maybe they left that or where I'm reading it wrong. And I hope that's it. But yeah, I I think the style of play should be set by the manager. Yeah, and exactly, and I think it's up to the technical director to ensure that 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 same mindset, the same philosophy, the same uh, style of play is regurgitated through the all levels of football throughout the club. So therefore, it's one seamless transition for the youth to come through. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, I, no, I, 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 yeah. No, I was just say I, I completely agree with you. At outside of the, you know, of the five, three is the only one that I had any issue with. Um, y yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I don't have. I mean, like again, I mean, I, I'll. We're still in the honey honeymoon phase, I guess, of the Ineos era, so. Um, okay. you know, obviously, you know, Jim Ratcliffe, he's had a very successful business career, so I don't see why that wouldn't translate over into, into this. So I'm, you know, I'm very optimistic and, uh, you know, but, but I'm watching, um, uh, so yeah, we'll see, man. Oh, uh, well, I do, I do like the one thing I do, the, the two that I really did like out of all of them was the, the support or like the somewhat setup they're going to have for the transfer the transfer system that the United are going to implement where the manager will go ahead and uh, he'll be asked what position does he know does he want so he could this this obviously this all this off season that the transfer window United's going to yeah. go for another another center back possibly a right back maybe even a left back because Shaw's injury pro Molassi is yeah playing. Dallo Dallo should be the starting right back but he can also play left back but you don't want to put so much dependency on one player to play two different positions you want to have at least all top teams have at least two, war, I wouldn't say world class, but two quality players at every position. Yeah, so, well, you know, and, don't have that right now. And briefly on Shaw, like I, I mean, I'm concerned about him because, like, apparently, I I think it was Southgate said like two or three weeks ago, like there was, you know, a very small chance that he was going to be playing in the Euros for them this year. Just but now what. I'm reading now is like, you know, there's a real chance because obviously he's their probably their best left back if we're, you know, really being honest or, you know, the only natural one they have. So is he really ready to come back from his injury and then he's going to play a whole month of, you know, you know, two, three, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is for the whole mat, is he going to be fit for that? And then he's going to come back to us. So that's a concern. Just from a, a, a United, that's concerning to me. No, and no, and I, I agree. And I think that's why I, I think this new setup system, the set, system they're going to have set up for transfers is great because Ten Hag can go to them and say, okay, here's the positions I want. And then they can obviously collaborate with, with all the, the I'm sure uh, Ashworth's going to come in. And then Wilcox will talk with you know, Ratcliffe and the Ineos group. And then Ten mm -hmm. Hag will be able to talk with them. And then they're going to give them a list of three. So they're going to obviously put. You know, top targets one, backups two, and then the third, like tertiary, is going to be the third now, one. But that so at least to get. I'm, I'm, I, w I want to pick your brain on this, uh, because, uh, where, where do you want? What's your priority? Because I, I think we both just because of the, you know, the FFP or whatever, it's probably going to be pretty difficult for us to bring in basically everything we need. What what do you want them to focus on? Is it a world class striker to help, you know, Hoyland and take some of the load off him? Um, uh, I well, I mean a, a center midfielder, I me mean, take a, a more defender. Like what what you, what would be your priority? I think every every top team has a spine that that they they live and die by. Uh, like if you look at any all some of the most successful teams in the world over the years have always had go, a good goalkeeper, yeah, a quality center back, a quality center back, you no know, 
uh, a great midfielder and a, a top-notch forward. Like if you look back at the Real Madrid and the Barcelona teams that were dominating uh, in Spain, like, and they all had that. Like yeah, Casillas, yeah, uh, yeah, Sergio Ramos, Tony mm-hmm. Cruz, Modric, and yeah, Ronaldo playing up front yeah, of Benzema, yeah. and then Bar- Barcelona was the same way. When you had like Victor Valdez, good goalkeeper, then you had Carlos Puyol. Jared Piquet and then midfield was Xavi and Iesta and out front was Messi like you had that spine that was going through the yep. team and I think that's what United United need to go out now and get themselves a, a, a spine and I'm not talking like literally like a spine I'm talking about just a metaphorical spine of having a like oh, not I think is going to come good I think he's yeah. he's sort of he's, he's shown him that does he have some no, mental he, lapses all goalkeepers do and of course the, the problem is being a goalkeeper myself there's nothing worse when you make a mistake because it's it's Mistakes always for goalkeepers always end up being ninety yeah, percent of the time ninety five being a goal. So it's yeah, always. But if you make a mistake as a position player, you know it might not lead to a goal. If you make a mistake as a keeper, I mean you're, <laughs> yeah, you, it, the whole the eyes are on you. Yeah, exactly. The way the only way I can do the best analogy I can think for any of the American listeners that no don't really understand football as much is like it's like the quarterback. A goalkeeper is like a quarterback. A quarterback yeah. throws an interception. That's a disaster. And especially if the t- the other teams like, no does a pick six and ends up being like the the you no know, the defining moment in the game. Same as a goalkeeper. A goalkeeper lets a goal go on and it ends up being the 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 the, the goal that knocks him out of the Champions League or get, loses a match or whatever. That's it's always the the mistake is always made to be a lot bigger. Than it is. So I think Onana will be good, but I do think that you know, need to get another centre back to come in to partner Martinez. A right footed centre, a right footed yeah, centre yeah. back is going to be priority. Mm-hmm. A, 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 a nice, a, a quick, the, 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 a quick centre back, like someone that's got some. I'm not expecting them to be lightning fast, but I do want someone who's who can, a, a good ball playing uh, centre back that is not lightning fast. But Maguire is good. You know, we he's, we talked about his character. Yeah, yeah. But is he going to be? Is he the long term plan for United for the next four or five years? Nah, like they need to get somebody in there that's going to be able to sit and play with Martinez, right? Set, right, a right footed right center back that can play with the ball and has a little bit of pace on them. Um, I know they've, they've been they've earmarked the Everton um center back that uh, as a bright uh, that yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And, and then and Tom. they've also been going after the um the kid in Portugal, um, from Benfica. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, oh, but I, I Neves. Uh, Neves, yeah, but I think they're yeah, asking for like an astronomical 85. sum of money. Yeah, yeah so, they, something crazy. He needed, yeah, you're not supposed to put on a 50, 51 or 52 million euro better than Benfica would like, just balked at it and said we want 85. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Ever, Everton might be in the same boat, but the, here's, the, here's the thing about Everton right now is that uh, they were deducted points, as we all know, this past season for FIFA, player, FIFA fair mm-hmm. play rules. Um, or no regulations in some yeah. in some manner. So United could probably take advantage of that and say, "Listen, like you're you're you're, you're trying to yeah, trying you got to offload. Your, trying, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to balance your books. So let us help you do that. But we're not we're not going to pay over the odds. And I think, like you rightly said, Ratcliffe's a successful businessman. He's a savvy businessman. I don't think he's going to go in there and start paying over the odds like United have been doing over the last what the last decade for yeah. players. So, yep. uh, but yeah, I think that's going to be the, the the biggest transfer policy. I think it's going to happen is United need to get that spine back. Um, get a good center back, get partner Martinez. Go ahead and get a, another, uh, maybe another uh, hold a midfielder. Uh, yeah, that's more that that can complement Manu's Manu's game because Manu's definitely got the technical ability to be able to go forward. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. love to see. I would love to see. You no, know, like the best way to describe it, and I hate to say it, but it's like the way you had Rodri, the way he complements De Bruyne. Yeah, and yeah. Foden, like Foden and Devine, like they they're able to just do what they want to do going forward because Rodri is just like, and then John Stones falls on that gap mm-hmm. too for Man City. So some of that, like the Tony Cruz, Modric kind of role that 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 they eventually picked yeah. up as they got younger, yeah. got older, is what United would need to have. But someone that can also uh, adapt to Ten Hag's the high, like well, so called high press. But we'll see. Well, I, I wouldn't mind, like you rightly said, another forward to take the pressure off of uh, off of Hoyland. The one thing that came out that came out was a, a day or two ago. I was I was I wasn't I wasn't happy about it is that the United didn't uh like didn't extend fall uh oh, yeah. contract the young yeah yeah I was yeah. kind of I was trying to figure that out um and I was listening to I was listening to someone's palm drawing a blank on it but um they they were, seemed to think that 
because I believe he's from London, that he might have wanted to leave and head back down towards that area. That's the only thing I can guess. Elsewhere. And it kind of and it kind of yeah. sucks too because like he's leaving for free, so like we're gonna get nothing, exactly. you know. Well, the, yeah. So, and speaking of that, like speaking of leaving them free, like I know, uh, her, uh, I don't know if it's a true report or not, but suppose United uh, went ahead and optioned the uh, the one year contract for Greenwood's uh, contract oh, extended yeah. to, to yeah, twenty yeah. twenty six. It's a smart. It's a smart move because if they don't, they'll lose them for either for pennies on the dollar, if you will. But they, yeah, you know exactly. You there's more. There's more. Uh, it gives you well, they could more, either more yeah, they could either sick. trade them or they could. Uh, you know, loan him back out to Dortmund because I was just reading earlier today that uh, the um, that they basic they want him back, uh, for a loan. Yeah. You know, well, not to. I was talking about with Greenwood though. It was Sanchez? Oh, contract's Greenwood. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, you're good. There was Greenwood. They extended his contract. They 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 went ahead and uh, there was an option for one year. To yeah, trigger, yeah. To trigger the option, and they went ahead and did it, even though he's not at the club and he doesn't want to be at the club. But it allows United mm -hmm. to try to, for once, dictate the the fees with their players. I like guess another thing that United haven't done yeah. well over the last years because there seem there seems players. like there's genuine interest in. I've heard teams in Spain, Italy, and even so. I mean, I'm sure he'll end up somewhere, and and not, you know, he he, I, it, you know, we might as well get something from from him, you know. No, exactly, and I think from what I've read, I've said I've read Barcelona is interested. I've seen Juventus is interested. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen with Greenwood. I just don't. I, we've talked about him before, and I don't want to keep. Yeah, yeah. He's going, to, he's going to move on, but I think United did the best thing by triggering his uh his one one year uh, option, and that way you now they can actually you know, get some money for him. Um, but yeah, we'll yeah. see with the, with the, with the number of players that's going to go out. Uh, I think obviously we went through the list before. There's going to be a, a like you rightly said a double digit number of players leaving, so it's going to be a busy summer. But I would love nothing more than in your system to come out and say, "Listen, we're supporting the manager," and then get this transfer policy that their souls you want to implement in place asap. Well, they, they, and from what I've read, that they're planning on making a determination or an announcement on him this week. Um, so they, if they haven't made it by the end of this week, because I believe the transfer window opens uh, next week, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So they, yeah, that they need to figure this out and start having things in in place for the next season it's i uh, actually i heard somebody equate it to this is like all the other teams are already preparing for the next season united are still living in last season like uh, yeah. you know kind of like put that shit in the past let's make a decision and move forward Exactly. All you do is look at Chelsea for Christ's sake. Like they're yeah. Chelsea just like they didn't. They, they actually, didn't hey, you know, as dysfunctional as they were, like they actually like, you know, at least they made a decision on the manager. It probably was the wrong decision in my opinion, but at least yeah. they made one. You know. No, exactly. So no, there's no, there's no more limbo. There's no more, you know, uh uncertainty floating over the club where united right now we don't know who's going to be the next manager we don't know who's going to come in who's, we know he's leaving we don't but we don't know who's coming in to replace him like we've got Martial out the door Varane's out the door casimir is supposed to be touted to be getting going to saudi arabia for 85 million uh and then on uh and then to so switch commerce switch notes or whatever on on this but like you know there's rumors that bruno might yeah be yeah yeah yep yeah and i think we both agree that we both want him back and um before we signed on tonight uh i was uh, there was an article i think steve bruce was saying that it would be a massive mistake for Enios to let him go and um you know i i haven't at least not i that i recall him i haven't really heard bruno saying anything specifically about ten hag but when i watch their relation especially after the post game in the FA Cup, it seemed like both of them were, or Bruno was doing his post game, and uh, Ten Hag went out of his way to come grab him and say, come celebrate with the team or whatever. So it seems like they have a good relationship, and, and you know, from what I'm viewing. 
No, they do. And that's the one thing you always want your captain and your manager to always be you know, aligned and be on, be on the same page with everything and have a good relationship. But the, there was a few things that I was thinking about over the last few days after reading the first thing that Bayern Munich, the company, wants to make uh, Bruno his first signing. Is yeah. that, uh, the interview after the FA Cup sort of now, you know, it, it means more now after seeing all these kind of things. Uh, that Bruno, Bruno did a post-match interview and they were saying about... Um, he asked a question of what, what about your future at the club with the uncertainty of the manager? What about your future? And he said, I'll be here as long as they want me to be here. But if they don't want me here, obviously I'll leave. And I think that was almost like a, uh, a mindset, like Bruno wants a new contract. He wants to be, he wants a bumper deal. I read, yeah. a, I read an article earlier today saying that there's sources saying that his agents are going to talk to multiple clubs. Um, now you and I talked already. I think that's just their, his agent trying to, uh, almost he's doing his do job. It. He's trying to get the yeah. most money for his client. Exactly. So I think that's that's his his agents trying to fear monger United into saying, listen, if you don't want to pay him what we believe he's worth, somebody will, and we'll find that club that will. No, he does. I think Bruno wants to leave. No, he's he's. I think he needs. I think he's he made it abundantly back. clear he wants to stay. Yeah, I, but I do think that he wants to feel satisfied, and like you and I talked about that as a captain. Well, because the... this is probably realistically his last big contract, so he wants a payday, yeah. another payday. Well, it, I think he wants to pay it, but I also think he wants to win. He wants to win some significant trophies. Like he's, you know, he's giving well, you yeah. the, his prime years. Uh, it's hard for players to really think back if, if no, when they're done playing, they've hung up their boots and they want to all of a sudden look back at the ever, you know, their playing career. Is he going to have any you no know, regrets? That's going to say, ah, oh, God, maybe I should have moved on for me. Maybe I could have. I could have ended up Barca. I could have yeah. ended up Real Madrid. I could have. You no, know, I could go to Bayern playing and you know, in fi- for Champions League finals and yeah. Exactly. So no, I think that's there's there's a couple of little premises that he's probably got in it, in his mind that he wants from United. He wants to be, you know, I personally think he wants to be the top earner. Which at the end of the day, if you look at the way his performances over the years, played with a broken hand, he's only missed one yeah, or two yeah. matches through illness and injury. I think he's definitely worth it. Now, are they going to throw crazy money like Adam like they've been doing over the last few years of three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand a week? I don't, I don't think they're going to do that, but I do think that. What he should be is any being the captain of the club, and you and I talked about this uh, offline. Where if you're the captain of the club, you should be that you should be the top earner because it not only sets the president being like if you if you're the captain, everyone needs to look up to you not only on the pitch but also off the pitch because of like you know if you want that captaincy money, you gotta yeah. you gotta get to his level. You got you yeah gotta do, exactly. You gotta perform. Weekend, set the out. set the expectation basically. Yeah. Because that was the way it was growing up. I remember watching like, like Eric Cantona was a captain. Like Brian Robson was obviously yeah. a captain right? you know, mm-hmm. when I was growing up. And then he unfortunately moved on. And, like, yeah, and yeah. And then Cantona took over. the uh, right. Steve Bruce, sorry, then took over uh, when they won the when, when they, uh, as captain. And then um, then that went on to Cantona. And then from Cantona on to Keane. Yeah. Keane. And, and then Keane, like, I idolized Keane growing up. And one of the things yeah. I remember, Keane got a new contract. And I think it's a crazy thing. Though. He was on he was on like £120,000 a week back then. Yeah, yeah, I know. And he, he, then he was a top earner. But I remember like reading all these different things and saying, like, the reason why he's that, because one, and you, if, all you have to do is watch that 99 documentary and see how he, well, all the yeah. players revered him he, as being like, yeah. the man. That, that they so were, the, that was my, my only knock on that. And I don't, they only... They only played a, a audio clip of him. I wish he was more involved in this. I I don't think he wanted to be. I think that I, uh, it, he must not. I'm sure they had to have asked him. I think they like. I'm sure. Well, he works with Gary Neville and, and Sky yeah. Sports, so I, I'm sure they've asked him. But I think he just sort of. I, I, Keen, Keen's the, he's an enigma sometimes. Like there's times where he'll, <laughs> you, you think you understand them, and then all of a sudden he doesn't. Because I think him and Ferguson, you hear, you read stories that oh they buried their hatchet, and then you hear the other stories that he hasn't buried the hatchet with Ferguson. Blah blah blah. But, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I would have loved to have seen Keen give his opinion on there. But there was a lot of players that uh, that no that didn't. Like, I didn't see. Solskjaer should have got more of a more, more of a presence yeah. on that, in my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but no, like, but just back to the captaincy with with Bruno as you no know, his performance this year. I thought he was he was one of the players that I think like, give it. He, he really worked the socks off. He tried his best. He he was played he played just center back against Liverpool. He played center midfield, holding midfield, center yeah, attacking midfield, false exactly. nine, right wing. Yeah, like, he's played and he's done every and he's he's done it. And he, no, does he whinge? Does he moan? Yes. But if you look back at any 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 man any captain, he'll. 
they bark orders and like obviously he doesn't have that the tenacity that the keen would have but no it, and it, which is it, 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 that's fine but at the end of the day he's leading by example he's letting his actions speak louder, louder than his words so yeah exactly but so what i've read today is that he's the, he's being disgruntled that you no know, he's not the top earner and he's seeing players like and it might be pissing him off like he sees players like casemiro earn more than him but who decides like oh well i'm i don't feel like playing because the manager dropped me um, I, I think he's. I think yeah. he was on, on some of the money to Tony Marshall, believe it or not. And now he's gone. But we'll say I, I would love for him to get a new contract. Uh, I would love for United to reward him with you no know, money that they, I think he deserves, and also hopefully going to win trophies. But um, we we'll have to just wait and see. I think his agents do what 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 they're supposed to do. Supposed yeah, to and get the best possible deal for their for their client. Absolutely. I mean, whether I think he's gonna. I think he's going to get paid, you know, regardless because he's attracting interest, uh, you know, from all over. I've, you know, I've even heard, uh, was it Al, was it Al Nasir, the, the Saudi Arabian yeah. club that Ronaldo's at or whatever? So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope he's with us. I want him to pay him. Um, uh, shifting gears to another player, uh, Sancho, um, Man, uh, this guy, he's got, uh, like, uh, like we, when we were t- first t- started off the episode, this guy's got some balls, man. I don't, I don't really understand this guy at all. And, uh, I even, uh, you know, a lot of people are chirping about him too. Uh, Mourinho, uh, in the post game of the Champions League. Um, I mean, it's not like he did a lot or whatever, you know, he basically had one, decent game and um so i wasn't really aware of this either but apparently so the was it the semi-final game or whatever where he had the the good match apparently i guess that was like the main game on in the uk that game so it was almost like uh everyone and probably in the uk saw that one performance and they just see that like you got to look at the totality of what he did the whole year and it was under what like i i don't have his exact goal number in front of me right now but i know it wasn't good i know that oh no it wasn't good at all and like i i think it's just i think it's just also the british media just the fact that he's a, he's, a, he's a british play, an english player they, yeah. they want to be able to. They want to try to you know, put him up on a pedestal and you no know, blame Ten Hag for him not playing well. But I read reports out of Germany. Um, obviously, you no, know, my little brother, he's big into German football. Like he loves, he's a big Bruce Dortmund fan, and he was. He, there was multiple reports saying that when he went back over to Bruce Dortmund, that they weren't really happy with him. And the, the actual manager, like the, the Dortmund manager, came out and did something very similar yeah. to what Ten Hag did, and and ridiculed him in public. And I didn't see any uh, any rebuttal from Sancho then so I think he played 22 or 23 matches for Dortmund when he went back there and he scored three goals and three assists yeah Cor- correct me if I'm wrong Scooter but I don't think that's literally like lighting the word on fire in terms of being able to like uh, to, to be able to, nope to be able to say that oh I'm going to dictate now that if I go back to Manchester United one of the biggest clubs in the world and I'm going to go back and dictate saying well, I'll come back only if the manager's not there anymore yeah that's it, if that's the kind of mentality the player's going to show now, what he's going to do it over and over again. And if United yeah. end up, and this is back to the whole the the, the balance of power that needs to be done at United, like the, the the club needs to be like no no one's bigger than the club. Like imagine back in the day, imagine if all of a sudden no, like let's just say David Beckham for example went out and loan, yeah. he went out and loan, he went and loaned to Preston North End and say he he had no uh, him and Ferguson fell out and they, obviously they did fall out yeah. in like 2002, well, yeah. 2003. I read if he came out back and goes, I'll come back to United uh, only if Ferguson's not there. Now, let's just take Ferguson's success out of the uh, no, the way. Say Ferguson's yeah. on the same, the same level same t- yeah. as Ten Hag is right now. I can guarantee you right now that like Roy Keane would have grabbed him by the throat and said, I'll walk you to the airport. I'm not, you're not yeah, coming back I, to the club. Yeah, I can see you later. Take it easy. Yeah. We don't we don't need you, Bex. <laughs> yeah. So like, I, don't, I just don't understand. No, Grant, that is this just a... You no, know, a puff piece done by some you no know, journalist that wants to try to like just create some sort of noise. Like, like we mentioned earlier, United, it's the, the season's over. We should be everyone should be talking about the Euros, but United are constantly always talked about. It's yep. probably four, four or five stories a day. Oh my now. god, every all the time. 
Yeah. My phone so, notifications are going off on the hour. Yeah. Whereas, you no, know, you have other clubs that are sort of in limbo. Like you've got you no know, like Barca that just changed the manager. Bayern, Bayern just changed the manager. Liverpool just changed the manager. Chelsea just changed the manager. Like, yeah. There's so there's so many uncertainties. Mbappe. Um, yeah. uh, Mbappe going to Real Madrid. Yeah. I did uh, quick quickly on him. Uh, this actually made me like him a little bit more. Is um. He's not going to take, uh, or he not that he would take it, but he's not going to, or he never asked for Modric's number at Madrid. So I kind of thought that was kind of uh, kind of cool uh, that yeah. he did that. I mean, I'm sure he'll end up with it cause whenever Madri- uh, Modric decides to call it quits or whatever. But I thought that I thought that was cool of him. Yeah, no, he, I read his interview too when he when he signed. He gave his first interview about signing for Real Madrid, saying it was a dream come true, and he talked about some of the stuff that happened at PSG. And he said mm-hmm. that they, you know, they they banished them to like the reserves. They wouldn't let them train, and if it wasn't for Luis Enrique, uh, he wouldn't have played again for PSG. But he said, yeah. he goes, I'm not here." I mean, he goes, "I'm not here to talk about the past. I'm here to complain because I am paid very handsomely to play a sport that I love that I would do for free." But he goes, and there's other people in the world that have a lot worse than me. There's people out there, there's laborers, there's you no know, bricklayers that have real problems going on. What I what was what I was going through wasn't a real problem. That was it was yeah. just a, it was a, it was an unfortunate situation. But yeah. Was, and I thought to myself, like to, to say that is to have that kind of mentality. To, you know, it's a, a young age, and just after seeing his move, you would think that he would try to bash, you know, PSG and really talk to everything and say. Per me, but look at me now, kind of thing. But yeah, didn't. yeah. He he basically he said it subtly. He he, he did it in a uh, I think a very uh, I guess what's French the, French, French way? yeah very French way yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, obviously PSG. I know the uh, they uh, came out and made a a statement pretty quickly after that, but yeah, I thought Mbappe handled the whole thing pretty pretty classy. No, he did, and I just like I know we'll like we'll see what happens with Sancho, but I I don't think I don't think if if his mindset's that with the Ten Hag, especially after not really setting the world alight with his performances this year, like you said, like I I I don't really I'd said of the he scored a goal against Liverpool, yeah, um, and uh, he scored one against City, and he he scored a couple other goals here and there, but he wasn't like. There's nothing that really sort of like sticks in the back of my mind, like the way the way the way I think about Lil Colby Mayer or Garnacho or even even McTominay, for example, against mm-hmm. Brentford. Like, there's matches that I have other players that really stood out. Yeah, well, and and for him, you know, it, you know, to have any it, like you know the previous issues about you know, um, like all you have to do is look, you know, look at Garnacho. And Mano, you know, young kids that are coming up, and they took advantage of their opportunities. And so, obviously, the path there is a path for that. You just got to take advantage of it, basically. You know. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. It just it's another another situation that uh, yeah that Ten Hag has to deal with. So it's an unfortunate situation, but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I as far as I'm concerned, he. You know that if we can sell him, make a little bit of money on him, or if we have to loan him out again, that'd be totally fine with me. Um, but my only, uh, about loan him, my only concern about loan him out is he, after this season, he only has one year left in his contract, and I feel like yeah, though you know, won't get any kind of return on investment. That's my like right now his yeah. contract expires and it was a June or July twenty twenty six. So if they yeah, loan him I believe next it. Season, yeah. If you loan them out next season again, that's to say they do. I think that they are going to loan them out. They have to put a option to no mandatory option to, to buy. Buy, yeah, no, I agree with that. Absolutely, because they they're going to have to make a something off of this. Yeah, and then set like set the set the the, the fee ahead of time. Don't do, don't wait until after yeah the season. yeah. So no, because I, it's, I'm sure people are going to say, well, you don't want to do that too. You don't want to cut your eggs too early because what if he goes out and has an amazing season? So they say he goes back to Dortmund. I'm like, well, if he has an amazing season, Dortmund, let him go. Like, yeah, they, I, oh, honestly, like even if he does, like it wouldn't really bother me because like I just don't really like his attitude. I feel like his attitude it would be cancerous in the locker room. Yeah, no, there's a reason Pep Guardiola let him go. Um, yeah, exactly. Said, like, if he was, if he was, like, no. Pep did the same Cole Palmer. Like Palmer's actually playing really well, but 
I don't I don't think Cole Palmer can be put people were trying to compare that. I read the other day someone was trying to say, Well, Pep let Sancho go and I was like, Ah, but he let Cole Palmer go and look at Cole Palmer and I was like, I think that Pep came out and openly said the reason why he let Cole Palmer go was because he couldn't guarantee him starting minutes over Phil Fodden, Kevin De Boyne, Rodri, yeah, yeah, Johnstone. yeah, yeah. Like he, he plays in the same position as, as Fodden and, and, and De Boyne. Like, so, yeah. um, and I think that's the same with if, if Sancho was to come back, like, does can Ten Hag guarantee him minutes? No, not not based no, on how Garnacho, not. Not, not based on how Garnacho has, has been playing, not you know, based on no, that's a like, we'll see what happens with them. I don't know if Anthony's gonna, well, he should move on. But yeah, I, don't know I what's hope so. With Rashford, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Rashford. Rashford might come in uh, next season with uh, with some fire in his belly, getting the left out of the England squad for the Euros, and uh, obviously well, we're going to uh, United. You know, based off of if history repeats itself, you know, have a good year, have a bad year, have a great. Maybe he'll have a great year. Maybe he'll score thirty goals next year for us, D. He does that. If you look up his stats right now, anyone who wants yeah. to look him up, you'll see Rashford literally goes through. He goes through ebbs and flows. He goes through. One yeah, he goes through spurts. Yep. In one season he'll be awful, and the next season he bangs in like 20, 20 plus goals, and then the next season he's absolutely awful, and the next season he's banging in twenty five plus goals. So we'll see. We'll, just, uh, we'll see what happens with that. But again, back to what we talked about. I think Ineos needs to go ahead and. Uh, no, rip off the band aid, if you will, uh, of what they need to be done. They need to shit or get off a toilet and let us yeah. know exactly what's going to happen in terms of. Yeah, I, the, I, the um, I hope, uh, I hope we hear something, you know, at least by the end of this week, uh, you know, going into, especially with the transfer window open, they need to figure it all out. Um, I know before, before we wrap up, we're almost an hour in. I know both of us. Especially with the Euros going on, I know we uh, we want to kind of spotlight some players, uh, you know, you know, or at least Man United players uh, playing in the tournament or whatever. So I think that would be a fun little thing for us to do going forward. And uh, what's I'm drawing a blank. Was it is it June fourteenth? When's it start again? Is it next week? The uh, oh the Euros. Is it, yeah, is it the fourteenth? I believe, uh, I believe so. I'll just double, just double I think check it, here, but... think it think it is the fourteenth. Yeah, Could be I'm wrong. more interested. I'm more interested to see how little Kobe Maynard fits into this England team and yeah, if he can continue, yeah. If he can really continue his uh, his, his form, arc rise, yeah, 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 so yeah. yeah. Open a match of Scotland versus Germany at three p.m. our time, so three p.m. Eastern, okay. eight p.m. eight p.m. in uh, England, and well, depending on where the part of Germany, yeah. maybe nine p.m. But yeah, it's open yeah. matches Germany and Scotland. So yeah, it's uh, what's what day? What, what day is uh, this? So next Friday? Today's the fourth. Yeah, next Friday. So yeah, next Friday. Um, yeah, I think that would be fun for us. Uh, you know, uh, throughout the summer to you know kind of spotlight some United players playing throughout the tournament or whatever. Um, briefly before we sign off, do you have any favorites that you think will win the Euros this year? Will uh, um, will Italy repeat? Uh, don't. Uh, <laughs> Italy, Italy don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I will we'll probably see. not. I, probably not. I just, I think that was a, that was that was one of those kind of like perfect storms. Yeah, so, yeah. I know Germany's got a quality team. Mm. It might be. It is honestly it could be England's best opportunity to win a major trophy. I hate to say it, but like they might yeah. be able to. They because you know some people turn around and say don't say it now because of the fact that like they always lose in penalties. But you did. England's there. England's strong. Spain's always the dark horse. Of course. Um, uh, let's say. Um, and we'll see what happens with the rest yeah, of the yeah. teams, but but you just you just, you just never know because like took, yeah. if somebody would if somebody would came to me in two thousand four twenty years ago and said oh by the way Greece is going to win it I'm like oh, oh yeah you. I know uh, yeah I'll, not I'll, a I'll, not a chance in hell uh, yeah you need to stop hanging out in uh, Amsterdam and the in the coffee shops in Amsterdam <laughs> that one but never would never would never in a million years when I thought Greece would have won it just like in nineteen ninety was it nineteen was it ninety yeah it was ninety two Denmark. Denmark went in and won. Oh yeah, yeah. So wow. that was another. Yeah. That was another dark horse in there. Yep. Like nobody yep. expected them. So like you just you can never know. For all we know, like yeah. we could be watching. We could be watching Poland. Like, no, love that we could be watching. I don't know. Yeah. Like Scotland. Well, Scotland are struggling at the moment, but uh, um, probably not. Old uh, maybe old Scott McTominay. 
Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm I'm more interested to see how a lot of the AI players play. You got Kobe Mania for yeah, anyone, yeah. Got, and I wouldn't mind watching to see if Garnacho plays at all for in the Copa America for Argentina yeah, Copa. Well. Mi- yep, yep. I I I'm, I am glad that uh, United stepped in on him. By the way, I know there was, um, uh, was it Javier Mascarano off the um, was it the under twenty three C. 21s yeah Yeah, that uh, i know they wanted him to play in the olympics so uh, i'm sure that that would you know be a fantastic experience for him but you know selfishly from a man united uh point of view i'm glad that they said no to that yeah no same here because he wouldn't be able to have a preseason because the olympics end so much later and the the olympics going to like almost late july so yeah no sooner done with the olympics and then then all of a sudden they'll have to they'll go to united and they just uh, It'll be just another disaster waiting to happen with another injury just waiting to happen. So, yeah, I'm exactly. glad they did that. But then speaking of that too, uh, uh, was it Olise from uh, the, the absolutely destroyed United St. Hanley? He's actually going to the Olympics as well. So they, they said if United do sign him, he won't oh, be able to yeah. have a pre- He wouldn't have a preseason with United. So Yeah, I yeah. Don't. Well, well no, um, it. yeah, me too. I mean, so next Friday, I'm sure we'll probably maybe, maybe we can get together for a couple drinks for a couple yep. of games, but uh, yeah, man, we're uh, just over an hour in. It's good to get another episode in. I know it's been a little bit of a hiatus for us. Um, if you like us or you don't like us, don't follow us. I don't really care. But uh, if you like us, <laughs> if you like us, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave us a review wherever you get your podcast. Uh, follow us on social. Instagram, we get Biggie and Smalls. D, what's your? You're on Instagram, this D's, which is monumental. What's your Insta? I, I think it's just DC dot McGuigan. DC dot McGuigan. You can yeah. follow me at Keyfip eighty six, and we will talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs>